Hey guys, my name is Ali and I'm a data analytics manager working in Oslo, Norway. In this video, we're going to take a look at DAX and introduce that to you guys. DAX is incredibly powerful and something I would recommend any serious Power BI developer to learn. So let's take a closer look at it. So these are the main points that I want to talk about now that we are introducing DAX to you guys. The first point is that you have to learn DAX. And um, DAX stands for Data Analysis Expressions, and it is the computing language which is used in Power BI. It's also used in other softwares. I know it's been previously used quite a lot in Excel, um, and, and I think it might be used some, some more places, but those are the main places that I know about. And the reason why you have to know how to use DAX is because when you get to a certain level and you're going to you know, go after and perform actual data analysis in Power BI, you have to be able to understand what the, the software is doing for you and you have to control the calculations, you have to control the measures, you have to understand how you combine different parts of the language to, uh, um, to create different types of calculations. Now, if you look at my screen, I have this very simple, let me just turn on this. Um, I have this very simple table um, and, and you know it has a row number, we have the fruit name, cost and revenue. Notice at the bottom of cost and revenue, it has summed up some things and for each row, you have different values. This is coming from, from uh, the, the column by itself because they are, they are interpreted in Power BI as whole numbers. So Power BI understands these are numbers, they can be, they can be summed. And when I add those to an element, it is going to try and do something for you. So if I go to if I go to cost, if I click this button, you can see it says sum, average, min, max, etc. These are things that the software is doing for you. It's more or less creating the 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 how can I say this the, the result for you here. But what you want to learn, you want to learn DAX so that you can create measures, and then you have the control of what the calculation is doing. Um, as it is being used in different elements and the reason for this is first of all just because you want to be specific in everything you do but also because when there are different types of analysis that you want to perform such as you know especially time over time analysis um, comparing stuff you want to exclude certain parts of columns you want to isolate some stuff um, you want to do different things then then you got to do that and, and that's what you do with DAX it's also you know, if you create a data model which has been optimized for data data analysis um, as a snowflake, DAX is optimized to be used with that. So <clears throat> it's almost like Power BI by itself, with the, you know the loading the data, the visualizations, all the integration possibilities are are really good. But for you to be to to be able to create that value for the end users. Um, you need to understand how to compute, how to create different calculations, and that is where DAX comes into the picture. So it is very important. If you want to be successful at Power BI, you got to learn DAX. Um, there's just no way around it. And you'll notice as you move, as you progress in, in challenges, in, in business requests, you will notice that, okay, this actually is something that isn't something I can solve right out, the right out of the box. I got to do it with data analysis expressions with DAX. Um, so that is the first point. So whatever you get out of this video, if, if this video makes you want to learn DAX, then I've, I'm happy. Um, the second thing is that what is DAX? DAX is a, is a functional language, which means it, it consists of a lot of different types of functions that has a certain purpose, and you combine those functions to create different results, um, to create different analysis, different calculations, um, a lot of different things. Let me show you guys an example. So if I right click this and I go new measure, um, I can create a calculation. And because I have something called cost or revenue, I'll just remake those as a, uh, as a measure. So total revenue equals revenue equals, let's say sum of the revenue column. <clears throat> so if we look at this, we have the name of a calculation then we have the sum function and what it is looking at. This is a simpler um, um, DAX function, which is just called sum. And after that is, you know, we, we create that. We now get a calculation in our table, a measure, uh, where we have been specific in its purpose. So there's no ambiguity of what this measure now does. It sums up the revenue column. Great. I can add that in here. Um, if you want to take it one more step further we can go 
Um, so we have fruit names, we have, uh, we have, we have bananas, so I can go total revenue and I can do banana, oh, let's do, yeah, let me do apples in parentheses equals. So I'm just going to use some functions now. Don't worry too much about those. I'm just trying to show you the purpose, how it works and that you have different functions that you combine. So I'm going to use the calculate function and then we are going to look at total revenue and I will say that fruit name equals apples. So here now we have, uh, we are, we are combining different functions. We're using the calculate and then we are reusing the previous function that I just created. And what will this do? This will give us the revenue for apples and it will only give us for apples. So just to kind of give you an idea, what can you do now? Now you can take the total revenue of apples. You can divide it on total revenue and you get percentage, percentage of total revenue um, per different fruit. Um, and I'm doing all of this without adding any new columns. Everything is happening as measures um, and it's, it's happening virtually. So, so, you know, this just shows some of the very, very basically shows you guys different functions and how that works together. It is a functional language. So on, honestly, one of the biggest challenges with DAX is just to learn what are the different functions, when do I use which one, and how do I combine them. Um, so there is some theory to it, but also very, very powerful. Um, my third point, and that is just because we're talking about DAX, there are a couple of things that I want to touch on, and that is what is context. And I'll make more videos on this later, but it's a very important DAX concept to understand. Um, and that is that context is is the environment in which you use a calculation when you drag a measure from the fields into a element or into your canvas there are certain elements that are creating a context in which that measure is going to be um, performed uh, or, or computed if you want to put it that way so if we look at this you can see this is a table the table has a context and in each table you have different columns and the combination of the columns with the different um, the different uh, columns with numbers creates different contexts so this is a context this is a context this is a different context and this is a different context it's different combinations of um, how can I say this? Almost lenses you can look through to look at the same calculation in different ways. Because if you think about it, we had the total revenue measure. It's only one, it's only one calculation for this, but it is being computed in different ways depending on which row it is being computed on. So it's different contexts. You know, you have um, you have you know row context, you have filter context, you have you have a lot of different theoretical contexts that are important to know. And once again, this is what makes DAX a little bit comp complex. But, but if, you're, if you're looking to learn DAX and you want to understand that, then you definitely want to know this and you want to kind of write down some more context. I need to understand context. And that is how, what environment are you using the measure in? How does it affect it? And especially how does the functions that you have chosen um, get, get, get uh, computed in the context that you are using it? It's also very important. Um, the next point that I have is calculated columns versus measures. And you know, I just want to touch on this, but measures are what I have created so far. They are calculations that are performed on the existing data and they are done virtually. Um, they don't add any more, um, how can I say this, size in print to the model because they are being done on the fly as they are being used in different elements. <clears throat> a calculated column um, is also something you can add um, and you can, you, you know, you can go, let's just go with apple flag equals um, if fruit name, let's find it, uh, equals apples, then one else zero. Let's just call it Apple flag and I'll drag that in. <clears throat> you can see now, um, ooh, that was the wrong button. You can see now we have Apple flag. It's, you know, it's creating 
uh, a one where it's apple zeros when it's not but this if you look on the right side this part this is a calculated column this is part of the data model the measures are being done on the fly so you know they have different purposes usually you add calculated columns to look up or dimension tables um, you try to stay away from those in the fact tables and and you can do most of it with measures and you should think measure first calculated column second um, uh, if you're in a fact table you should think measure first if you're in a dimension table then you might use calculated columns but they expand the imprint of the model of the size of the model and they also increase the the load time because you are adding more stuff to your model while the measures get computed when you're using them in an element so so good models are usually you know dimension tables fact tables and then you use measures in the fact tables that should be more than enough for you to do your advanced analysis and calculated columns can be used you know i'm not saying never but um you want to learn how to do it with measures uh, predominantly and then if you need to calculate columns then you will use those in those specific cases but it's very good to know about the differences and you should be thinking measures first when you are working with DAX um, the last thing that I've noted and th this function is so important and that is calculate um, and what calculate lets you do and I actually used it before it lets you change the context in which a calculation is being um, calculated, the, 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 the way the calculation engine is, is uh, looking at a, a, uh, a calculation. Now this video is just an introduction um, to DAX and why, it, you know, why, what it is and just point out some main things. I don't want to go into calculate too much, but if you're learning DAX, you want to write down calculate on a piece of paper and you want to learn that function because it is it is very powerful gives you a lot of flexibility without having to add more columns or without having to do a lot of stuff back in that you can actually solve with measures on the fly with really incredible performance in power bi i hope you now have a better understanding of what dax is and that you are thinking to yourself that this is something i absolutely have to learn myself if you have any questions, then let me know in the comments. And if you want to learn more about Power BI, then check out some of the videos that you can see on the screen right now.